Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AdamyTutors.com and welcome to this video on electrochemical cells. So in this video we're going to look at what an electrochemical cell is, we're going to calculate the E0 of a cell as well and we're also going to look at cell representations as well. So we're going to start by looking at uh, how we can construct electrochemical cells and they're basically made up from two half cells. And if you don't know what a half cell is, I have done a video on half cells, so you just click on the link below and you can have a look at that there. Um, but they are effectively made from two half cells, and you can see I've got two diagrams here that I'll look at in a minute. Um, and what happens is one of the half cells will be reduced and the other one will be oxidized. Now we're going to use something called E0 values, and E0 values uh, show us uh, how well a reaction will either accept electrons or uh, receive electrons. Uh, and they're given a positive and a negative value. And something that I want you to remember is that positive E0 values uh, will mean that the reaction is more likely to be reduced and negative E0 values will show that the reaction is more likely to be oxidized. And we're going to use that quite a lot uh, throughout these examples here. And we're going to show you where we can apply them. They become particularly useful when you're working out the E0 of a cell. Cells, full cells, are connected by salt bridges. And this is the blue dotted lines that you're seeing here. And salt bridges are basically just bits of filter paper that's uh, dipped into a very saturated salt solution. Now, normally the salt of choice is potassium nitrate, really, really soluble, uh, and can move easily across the, um, the ions, sorry, can move easily across the, um, the filter paper that we've dipped it in. So it is really important that we do this, and its main use, its main purpose, is to uh, readdress ion balance uh, in the two half cells as well. And that's about as much as you need to know for the salt bridge. Uh, you've got to be careful, though, that any values that we're using here uh, are assuming that um, we have standard conditions. That means we have 298 Kelvin, 100 kilopascals uh, of pressure, uh, and also that the concentrations of any solution used are one moles per dm cubed. And obviously it's very difficult to get them exact values. And you'll find that when you do these practically, that your values will differ from uh, what it says in, in theory. So um, you have got to be careful about that as well. Uh, and there will be another video uh, in this playlist that looks into um, the effects of concentration and temperature on these reactions as well. But I'm just going to go through the basic electrochemical cells for the time being. So I'm going to go through two examples and I'm going to show you how we do the cell representation for each one of them and eventually we're going to calculate the E0 of the cell as well. So I'm going to start on this side here. Now this is a, um, a full uh, electrochemical cell and we've decided to link the zinc uh, half cell with a copper half cell. So you can see here that I've done anything that's been oxidized I've written in red and anything that's been reduced I've written in green so I've color coded the whole thing so you can see it a little bit clearly so I've started with this one here this is zinc now you'll notice that all of our equations here are written in the reduced form what that means is that your electrons are written on the left hand side irrespective of whether the reaction is actually being reduced or oxidized we always write them we always write them like that it's just a standard way in which we represent them so I've written down the equations uh, for the two half cells here. So this one is zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons will form zinc. And this one's copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons will form copper. And I've written underneath the standard electrode potential for each half cell. Now in the exam you'll be given these. You're not expected to remember these values. Um, so we've got minus 0 0.76 here. Remember minus E0 values means this is going to be an oxidation process. Uh, and this one is uh, positive, or plus 0.34, and that tells us that this is uh, a reduction process. Um, so we can see here we've got zinc and zinc 2 plus. Now because this has been oxidized, oxidation is the loss of electrons. So you can see here that actually this is showing uh, zinc 2 plus accepting electrons. So actually this reaction is actually going to go backwards, uh, and that shows us uh, oxidation. So remember, if the front going forward is reduction then going back is oxidation so what's happening here is the zinc is actually giving up two electrons to form zinc 2 plus when it's connected with this electrode here so uh, this is described as oxidation so the electrons are effectively going to be made by the zinc and the electrons are going to go through this wire here through the voltmeter and down into the copper and this is going to pick up the two electrons and the copper two plus in this solution are going to react to form uh, copper 
um, metal. Now, what you would observe in this case is because the zinc is going to form zinc 2 plus, because this is showing oxidation, then the zinc will effectively start to dissolve. You'll get this will start to thin because obviously a lot of it is being used to make zinc 2 plus. And on the other side, you'll get a buildup of copper around this electrode because the copper 2 plus ions are accepting the two electrons that were released from the zinc to form copper. So you'll see a thickening of this electrode here, and that's what you should observe. And you see we've got our salt bridge in the middle. Now we can represent this, instead of drawing out beakers and electrodes, we could represent this in a, a bit of a neater way, in a quicker way. We call this a cell representation here. So you can see here that I've written down uh, our most negative electrode, which in this case would be zinc, because this is what's making the electron. So this is going to be our negative electrode. Um, and obviously the other side is going to be positive. So I'll put that on that side, because that's accepting the electrons. Um, so what we do is we write the most negative, the negative electrode on the left-hand side, and the positive electrode on the right. Now what we've done is we represent it by writing our um, electrode, which is the solid electrode, which is zinc, on the left. We draw a line, and this line shows the phase boundary. Now this is the boundary between uh, a metal and a solution, so we draw a line there. Uh, and then we write zinc 2 plus closest to the double line, which is the salt bridge. And we always write the most oxidized form closest to the salt bridge. So out of zinc and zinc 2 plus, zinc 2 plus is the most oxidized form. Uh, it's got an oxidation state of plus 2. This has got an oxidation state of 0. Okay, so if we look on the right hand side, which is the copper electrode, you can see here the most oxidized form out of copper and copper 2 plus is copper 2 plus because it's got an oxidation state of plus 2. So we draw that closest to the salt bridge, as you can see here. Uh, and then the lines suggest the phase boundary because we've got an aqueous solution and a metal electrode. So that's how we work that out there. Now we can work out the E0 of the cell, and this is effectively what this voltmeter is reading here. This is the potential difference across this. And we can do that really easily by doing E0 of the reduced form minus E0 of the uh, oxidized version. Or um, we can put the numbers in and then we can get our value. So E0 of the reduced form is going to be uh, this one here. This is the copper that's been reduced. So I'm going to put 0.34 and we're going to subtract that away the oxidized form. This is minus 0.76. So minus 0.76. And if we put that in our calculator, we should get the voltage or potential difference of plus 1.1 volts. And that is basically the electrode potential uh, of this full cell here. Now, I've got another example just below, um, and I've changed it a little bit, because actually, with this one, it's not too bad, because we've got a negative electrode and a positive electrode. Sometimes, though, we can have two positive electrodes, and one of them is more negative, uh, and that would take up the role um, of the negative electrode. So for example, I've got this here. Now again, I've changed it again as well because instead of having a um, solid electrode and its ion, we've effectively got uh, two solutions here. So we've got, in this case, we've got tin 2 plus and tin 4 plus uh, in a beaker, and here we've got Fe3 plus and Fe2 plus. Neither of these are solids, they're all aqueous. So we need an electrode to be able to carry the current. And the electrode we choose is platinum electrode. So I'm just going to label that on there. So these two electrodes are platinum. So put PT in there. Uh, and platinum is a really unreactive metal, so it's not going to interfere with our ions. And also, uh, it's a good conductor of electricity, so it allows us to move the electrons from one side to the other. Now, I've written down our... Um, no, plus 0.15 and plus 0.77. Now the most negative out of these two is obviously the 0.15. It's more negative than this one, uh, even though it's got a positive value, it's smaller, it's closer to the negative end. So because this is effectively the most negative, we say that this one is undergoing oxidation. So what's happening is the tin 2 plus is going back to form tin 4 plus, just like in the example up here. Whereas this one is going Fe3 plus to Fe2 plus. So this is making the electrons, so we call this electrode as negative electrode, which is this one here, uh, and this is going to make the electrons. These electrons are going to go through the wire, through here, into this electrode here, where the Fe3 plus will pick up the electrons to form Fe2 plus, uh, and that's what's happening here. So we say that that is positive. 
So we're going to put that on there. That's positive. Okay. Uh, again, I've written our cell uh, representation here. Again, remember the most oxidized form, well, the negative electrode is written on the left-hand side and the positive electrode is written on the right-hand side. The most oxidized form is written uh, closest to the salt bridge. Now, this is a little bit different because we don't actually have a solid metal electrode. We've actually got, well, we've got a platinum electrode here, um, but we've got two ions and both of these are in solution. So what we have to do is write it like this. We put platinum there on the left-hand side. The solid line represents the phase boundary between solid and solution. Uh, and then we have two ions that are in solution. Now, the most oxidized form of them two ions is tin 4+. Plus. This goes on the right-hand side, closest to the salt bridge, and the tin 2 plus goes a little bit further out. Now, because these are both in solution, there's no phase boundary here. So what we do is we separate it with a comma because they're in the same phase. They're both aqueous. And on the right-hand side, we've got iron 3 plus, iron 2 plus, and platinum. Again, most oxidized form closest to the salt ridge, which is the double line. Okay, so uh, we're going to work out the E0 of the cell of this one as well. Uh, both of these are positive values. So we're going to take E0 of the reduced form, which is the uh, green number there. So we're just going to put 0.77. And we're going to subtract that away from 0.15, because that is the uh, oxidized form. So this is the tin 2 plus going backwards. Uh, and that is going to create a E0 value uh, of the cell of 0.62 volts. Uh, and this is the reading that we'll see on our voltmeter. Now, you've got to be able to uh, work out E0 of cells, of full cells, by using these equations. That's really important. And you've got to understand that one of them is negative and one of them is positive. And the one that is uh, negative is always the reaction that's undergoing oxidation. Uh, and that number is always going to be the most negative number. So you can kind of remind yourself, the most negative E0 value is the negative electrode. And that's where the electrons are being produced. And remember, always in electrode potentials, uh, when you see them on a data sheet, they're always written in the reduced form. So if your uh, cell is being oxidized, you have to swap the reaction around or the equation around, and you go backwards instead, because this is a reversible reaction. But um, that's it. Hope that helps. Bye.